91 degrees and I'm outside. Notice that the stern, the rear of the boat, has significantly more sealant on it, which is, you know, if you're going to get a bow wave, a stern a wave cresting over the stern, you might want a bit more protection. But it only seemed like they goobered up on the corners heavy. The center section of the transom was very thin. Um, and again, it's 91 degrees, so this is soft material, easy to work with. The rubber molding is pliable and soft. So if you can afford, to, if you can do this in a summertime temperature setting out in the bright sun, um, it's going to make your job easier and it's going to make it coming apart a bit easier. Unscrewing these, I may be into this 45 minutes and I've got all the rivets off the hull to deck joint. I'm going to have to open the hatch and come inside and unbolt the chain plates and because they do um, extend through the joint here so there's no other way I mean I, I might be able to guide it up and off the chain plates but I have to cope with all three at once so I'm definitely gonna do the port and starboard chain plate I might leave the bow chain plate and just skimmy shimmy it over that one over the years it has ducks strikes and scrapes on this side and where this is I'm sure it's taken impact so I'm gonna be taking that into account on my mold and the bottom side of this deck I'm gonna be laying more glass in the future to strengthen it so that this crack here coming through here and that could just be shrinkage over time or it could have been partly to do with the impacts because this spidering, spider cracks, all boats have them over time. It's rare if you don't. Um, and there are a couple other beauty spots to fix on this. And that's why I decided to make a plug out of it. Um, down here, sitting on, yeah, we have this lovely scrape hole, which will be easy enough to fix and patch and keep this hole. But if I can't do a title, I may as well do something fun. Um, <clears throat> I may, may, might do some interesting modifications. I might raise the sides. I don't know yet. So as I've got it in this state, I'm going to see where it goes um, and progress from there. So as I take it apart and find out what I have and what I'm working with and what I do like about it and don't like about it, I'll be changing that. Over here, I have not too much lead, but I'll tell you, I've got buckets of it and I have more in other storage locations. Um, that 35 gallon oil bucket is full of lead. Wheel weights, zincs, a lot of wheel weights are zinc. You've got to sort them. You've got to just be able to read them, tell by the metal clink they make and the metal thunk they make, or just by looking at the steel, it's the, uh, the alloy itself. Lead is more of a tarnished alloy. Zinc doesn't tarnish as much and oftentimes is painted oddly. Um, I find that odd. And then these days you have plastic weights and you have steel weights and those are easy to eyeball. Um, but just tapping it and the bend of the metal, the alloy, you can generally tell what is lead and what is steel. Um, the zinc tire weights aren't a throwaway. Anodes. You could make anodes for your boat or to sell. Um, people always need anodes. Um, even if you bought a couple of standard issue alloys. I mean, heck, if you went to the boat shop and bought the most expensive anode and made a copy of that to sell at a more reasonable price. Hey, if you're going to smelt lead and you're going to sort out your zinc, you may as well fire up a batch of zinc to make anodes out of, and then you can sell those at a profit, possibly. I haven't looked into the price of a zinc anode. They're pretty inexpensive, but something to do with it. And if you're going to have an engine or you're going to have electrolysis that you're going to worry about, like on my bigger boat, uh, you're going to want an anode or two. Um, 
I do have a Yanmar diesel and I, it's not in the boat yet. It came out of a semi-truck APU unit, so it's not maritime, marinized. Um, it's not a boat engine, it's just a diesel engine. After all, that's what they originally did, is just put a diesel in there. And they added raw water, fresh water, cooling systems as a update to how they did them. Early ships, boats had radiators and cooling systems that better served by using the raw water from the ocean or the lake. Um, so it's easy enough to convert a regular engine to a boat engine as long as you're careful about things like anodes and trying to use quality parts and you go as far as painting or powder coating some parts will help your parts last longer because they won't be so readily to corrode. Anyway, enough for now.